Hello. So in this video, I'd like to introduce the sum and difference formulas for the cosine. I apologize for the informality of my setting and also for the roughness of my writing. This laptop has came with a digital pen that I have never been able to make work, so I have to use my fingers. So I'd like to introduce the sum identity for the cosine. So remember our discussions about identities. This is an equality. It's going to be true for every value of x and every value of y. And what this identity does is allow us to rewrite the cosine of a sum so that there are no sums inside of the cosine. Um, the other kind of half of that statement, unfortunately, it does get rid of the addition inside of the cosine, but this right-hand side of the parentheses is going to be quite complicated in its way. Sorry, that was a typo. The cosine of x plus y is the cosine of x times the cosine of y minus the sine of x times the sine of y. So notice we have addition inside the parentheses. It becomes subtract on the right-hand side of the equal sign. The cosine of x plus y is these cosines minus these sines. The really powerful applications of this sum identity unfortunately don't really show up until you're taking a calculus class. So it's probably a little hard to motivate this. I mean, when you see what we have written here, your first instinct is probably that what's on, what's to the left of that equal sign is nicer than what's to the right of that equal sign. But let's give an example where we can use this identity to find a value, to evaluate the cosine. Let's find the exact value of the cosine of 75 degrees. Now, 75 degrees isn't a value whose cosine we know. But it's the sum of two values whose cosines and sines we know. So if we write 75 degrees as 45 degrees plus 
30 degrees, we can hit this with our identity. We take the cosines and then we subtract, remember? Even though we have addition up here, it turns into subtraction down here. We subtract the signs. Put that uh, that degree marker in the wrong place. Let me move it inside the parentheses. And then let's see. The cosine of 45 degrees, the square root of 2 over 2, the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So let's see, not the uh, not the eraser tool. There we go. The square root of two times the square root of three is the square root of six. Got the square root of two minus one. So the square root of six minus the square root of two, and I'm using the fact that. You no, know, we have a common denominator. Our common denominator is four. So we can do this subtraction. So here's a sum identity. There's also a different identity. In other words, a subtraction identity. So the subtraction identity looks a lot like the addition identity. We're going to have the cosine of x. We're going to have the cosine, the cosine, he says, while writing something else. But what I was saying out loud was right. We're going to have the cosine of x times the cosine of y. And we're going to have the sine of x. And the sine of y, and they are going to be connected, though, via addition rather than subtraction. So it it's a bit um a bit annoying that these signs don't match when you have addition, it turns into subtraction. When you have subtraction, it turns into addition. So that's the formula, or I guess I should say those are the formulas. There are two of them for the sums and differences inside of a cosine. 
there are similar forms of those for sums and differences inside of sines and inside of tangents. And those will be their own videos and their own textbook sections. I would not necessarily worry about committing these to memory. Um, I think it's more important to be able to use these. Like, I'll say this right up front. I did not memorize this formula as an undergraduate. It's just something I look up whenever I want to use it. But... I can use it. I can look at the 75. I can say, okay, this is a sum. And then once I've recognized that this is a sum, I can plug and play and get an answer. So rather about worrying about committing stuff to memory, I'd worry more about being able to use these identities like we do on this frame.